All right, and welcome back to another great episode of Screw the W-2. And today I actually have a great guest on. He's actually been on my podcast uh, two times uh, talking about his lending business, but kind of wanted to do a little bit more deep dive into kind of his uh, previous job or jobs, plural, I should say, uh, before he said, yep, a W-2 isn't for me. I want to be self-employed and uh, be in control of my own uh, income and destiny. So, uh, Timothy, welcome back to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. Man. Now, uh, I know we talked a little bit on offline and you had sent uh, kind of an interesting email to all your subscribers a while back, but I think you said you had, was it roughly 26 jobs before you were 28 or something like that? Or? Yeah, I, I actually, I went self-employed at 26. Okay. I, I just turned 26. I went self-employed one month after turning 26. Okay. I just turned 30 last weekend. So I got my first job at 17. So between 17 to 26, I worked and quit 26 jobs. Wow. <laughs> That's not to sound like a flex or an achievement. It's just to give you a rundown that it wasn't for me. <laughs> sure. So uh, maybe of those, was there one that, I don't know, like what was the one that stuck out? Like this one I hated the most, or maybe this one I tolerated the best per se. <laughs> I never liked working for anybody or somebody else determining my pay. I okay. Never in different fields, restaurants, car dealerships, hotels, all that. Um, there's there's jobs that I tolerated more because the people I worked with, uh, the mm. employees, we had fun. And sure. Like an eight hour shift because we goofed off the whole time. And, <laughs> If you're talking to a guy who had 26 jobs over a span of 10 years, clearly he didn't take those jobs serious. So I <laughs> goofed off throughout the shift, so time went by quick. But I would honestly say my last job I hated the most. Okay. Um, and it was the line of work. It wasn't the people. Um, I didn't even know what the hell I was doing at the job. I wasn't qualified. Mm. Um, I, I applied and my job was to hang like acoustical panels at schools and, and, and stuff to eliminate sound. Oh, okay. And I mean, I knew the basics of it, measurement, everything, but I didn't know everything I was dealing with, all the tools I was dealing with. I was there for two weeks. I closed my first two loans back to back and I just stopped showing up. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so obviously, you know, you kind of made the jump, uh, you know, utilizing your network and experiences to uh, do private lending, uh, portfolio lending for investors and homeowners. What was kind of your, I don't know, I, I'm done with this W2. I got to get out of here. You know, what was kind of like the defining moment for you? Right. Um, probably my first job at 17. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I pondered so many ideas. From the age of 18 up until 26, when I went self-employed, I had tried so many different things. I tried day trading stocks. I tried day, uh, nice. day trading binary options, the Forex market. At one point, I was trying to create a dating website. I knew nothing about tech. <laughs> I was just trying to find a way to get rich and get out. Sure. Um, luckily, I didn't invest money into that one. But uh, honestly, all of them, I, I would always come home from work and always work on something. Um, okay. I didn't spend time with friends much over these past 10, the, the 10 years I was working self-employed, uh, working W-2. Um, I would come home and I would study day trading three or four hours a day, five hours a day. Okay. I would study this idea. I mean, at one point I was a realtor as part-time. Mm. I would network like a madman with that. So I was always trying to stay busy to get away from it. So I guess from day one, I've always wanted it. There was no, there was never a specific job where I was like the same for me. Gotcha. Okay. Just more of wanting the control of obviously your pay and then your schedule and yeah. someone not telling you what to do, basically. Yeah. Freedom is freedom is everything. The pay is a plus that allows you to travel, but the freedom, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pay allows you to travel financially, but the freedom. Yeah. You know, there's people working W 2 to make 300 a year, but they haven't traveled in four years because they're yeah. Yeah, because they're given maybe two weeks vacation, paid vacation if they're lucky, and then trying to schedule. Uh, time away and then they got kids in school and I I think a while back you had taken a trip to Paris was that right or yeah yeah I took my girlfriend to Paris for her birthday okay uh, 
And next week we're celebrating our anniversary in Bahamas. Okay. So, well, congrats. <laughs> thank you. Just to give an insight of that self-employed life that I was chasing and why it's worth it. So. Yeah. So just as a heads up, I was in Bahamas uh, eight years ago and the food and drinks can be a little pricey there. So yeah. <laughs> just as a forewarning. Gotcha. <laughs> I was looking at the prices of everything. Everything is a little pricey, but it's well, like- yeah, but I mean, eight years ago, I think, uh, my wife and I were there. We stay at the Atlantis Resort, and I think uh, two pieces of pizza and two drinks were like thirty-eight bucks or something. <laughs> kind of ridiculous. And who knows what it is now? <laughs> yeah, inflation, huh? <laughs> exactly. So now you mentioned. Uh, um, I don't know if you you know documented per se, but did you have a Freedom Day per se, or was it just you knew at age twenty-six you were done? And September twenty-seven, two thousand nineteen. Okay. My boss, the tax. Um, so I started that acoustical job and I worked one full week and then I got sick and I was out okay. for a week and I never get sick for a whole week. So this was abnormal. Okay. And I was sick for a week and then I went back to work. And when I went back to work, I had been studying the mortgage industry for like three months before I got this job. Okay. And I didn't know much about it. I never had connections i had to network i was messaging three to five hundred people a day wow i mean it was copy paste i looked like a bot on facebook <laughs> i actually got banned from facebook messenger probably 12 times oh, no. <laughs> hours because how much i was networking yeah and i didn't think it was legit because you don't need a license for private mortgages mm-hmm. and i had two deals in the pipeline and then when those closed they took three and a half weeks to close. This is pre-COVID, so there was no delays. Okay. They took two and a half weeks to close. It was the same investor. They closed back-to-back days. Okay. And while it took three and a half weeks to close, I probably only had two and a half hours invested into the process because I'm not the underwriter. I'm not the processor. Mm-hmm. I just do the quoting, answer their questions, and maybe assist with scheduling things if they need help. But for the okay. most part... They, they, the lender pays everybody for that. Okay. I had a couple hours invested and I received my check and it was more money on, and they were small loans. They were like hundred thousand dollar loans. It was more money than I would have made working 50 hours a week at this job for two months. Wow. So then I was like, wow, this is actually legit. Yeah. And it pays way more. And I was in the warehouse sweeping when I checked my phone and saw the wire come through and I was like, this is legit. <laughs> that was my last day. Okay. Yeah. So it was risky because I quit with only like two and a half months of bills and savings, Mm. but I had like four other deals in the pipeline. So I felt comfortable. Okay. So yeah, we kind of as as a um, extra fire, so to speak, where, Hey, I got these loans. If I can close them, then things are going to work out well versus, well, I got 200,000 sitting in a bank account, I can slough off for two years or whatnot. (laughs) Yeah, it goes back to, I think it was Barbara Corcoran who said, uh, don't wait for the perfect time because there's no such thing. Yeah. I, my girlfriend was a little nervous about me quitting my job with only like two months left of savings in the bank. Yeah. But I told her, I'm going to use this to cause fear in me, to motivate me to network more. And, Mm -hmm. And it worked. Yeah. Unfortunately, I went and put a huge pipeline in and I had like, keep in mind, I, um, the highest paying W2 I ever had was $24,000 a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, and right before COVID hit, I networked like a madman after going self-employed and I had like $42,000 in pending commission coming in the next two weeks, three weeks Wow. So to make two years salary in a month. And then COVID happened and took it all away. Oh, geez. So I use these little things to motivate me to turn around and, you know, push harder because life's going to happen. No matter how mm-hmm. bulletproof your business is, there's going to be recessions. There's going to be something that occurs. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of the, ironically, the double-edged sword because a lot of people like the security of a W2 job because I'm getting whatever, 24,000 a year, I'm getting a thousand every week or whatever the case may be. But Mm -hmm. one, we learned in COVID that no job is secure. You can be laid off overnight in the most, you know, recession proof industry that there is. So um, as far as, uh, you know, as you've been on this journey since uh, September 27th, 2019, has there been any regrets or anything you do miss about your, you know, previous 
W two life versus being self employed now? Um, there was there was more in person human interaction. Um, I run my entire business on the laptop you and I are speaking on right now. I mean, mm-hmm. I've never met with an investor in person. Okay. Mortgages in forty five states, and it's all online, start to finish. Wow. So the in person touch is gone. I mean, of course, I spend time with friends and, and family and travel and that sort of thing. So I'm not hidden in a closet, but <laughs> sure. Out of everything, that's the one thing. And taxes, tax season was much simpler when you're done. <laughs> yeah, if you just give your W two and the ten ninety yeah. nines, and you're done. <laughs> you go into H and R Block, you hand them a W two, and they handle it thirty minutes later, telling you how much you're getting back. Whereas now, I'm my own accountant, and I. Mm-hmm. I do my account every I, I do my accounting every week on business expenses and stuff. And my last year's taxes were a total of like 35 documents or something. Jeez. <laughs> when you're self-employed, you know, you, you have investments and stuff, you understand, but yep. it's a whole different ballgame. I've always said only W2 people look forward to tax season. They're the only yeah. ones getting money back. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, right? it's simple for them. They don't need to compile, you know, a ream worth of paper of documents and everything and their yeah. K1s or whatnot. So, yeah. So taxes, I miss. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> now, if there's uh, anyone that's listening to this and, you know, not necessarily they want to go into, you know, private lending or as a realtor or whatever the case may be, but just, you know, they're in a W-2 job. They feel stuck per se. They want to, you know, open a business, become self-employed, be their own boss, whatever the case may be, but they just feel stuck or maybe fearful of taking that step. What kind of advice would you end up giving them? First step is based on what worked for me and others that I know, you have to find out who you are. Um, the reason I say that is mortgages worked for me because I've always been fascinated by numbers. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been told by many people that I'm very good at socializing and networking. So okay. when you're very good with numbers and you are already a realtor and understand real estate blended with good knowledge of numbers and people skills, mortgage is like, it's, it's a gold mine. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it all lines up. So it worked out for me. Whereas I trained people from start to finish the mortgage industry, they never closed a loan. They failed and went back to the W-2. Oh, wow. For me, because numbers work for me. Okay. Um, I think people are so quick to want to escape the nine to five, which is understandable. I was, but yep. <laughs> you got to know who you are as a person. You know, I, I've studied Forex trading for 10 years and I know people who make a hundred thousand a month, but I can't win a single trade. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's not what works for me. We're mm-hmm. all different. We're all meant to shine in something different. So yep. you got to find what works for you. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of that just comes down to, I mean, maybe there's a, you know, I think so many people get tied up with, I need to find a job, but at the end of the day, you just need to find a way to sustain your, you know, uh, living and whether that's a job, you're selling a service, you're selling a product, you're making yourself valuable where people come up to you. It's like, Hey, Timothy, here's my take my, here, take my money. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah if, if you provide value, I mean, if you look at anybody who's super wealthy, Jeff Bezos, Elon, yeah. they've all created value. Mm-hmm. They, you know, Warren Buffett's super wealthy and manages, uh, I think it's $450 billion because he returns a high percentage return. Yep of wealthy people's money. So they're going to keep giving them more and more. When you provide value, you know, if you go up to somebody and say, Hey, can you give me $5? Mm-hmm. They're just going to lose $5. Now, if you say, Hey, I'm going to give you the best tasting coffee of your life for $5. You just made $5. Now you yep. do that a thousand times a month. Now you're rolling in it, you know? Mm-hmm. So for providing a service or a product in general, in my case, it's a service and product. Um, that's the fastest way to it. Honestly, that's the name of the game. Mm-hmm. You have to provide something in value if you want their money. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to be in business very long. So yeah. All right. So that's good. Well, yeah, I appreciate you coming on the uh, Screw the W2 show, uh, Timothy. Any uh, last words of wisdom or advice for any uh, entrepreneurs out there? <laughs> the first step, find who you are before okay. you dive too into something. Take, take your pros. You know, there's... There's not enough time in this life to master everything. If you are absolutely horrible at something, don't spend the next 10 years trying to get good at it when you're already good at something now and can make a fortune on it now. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So really study who you are and to stay hungry because you can wake up tomorrow and all of it's been taken away from you. Just like when COVID happened with mine. Yep. Just like how I mentioned, I have 5 million in business right now, but I view it every morning as I only have two and a half million. Mm -hmm. That keeps me hungry because tomorrow I can wake up and I lost my biggest deals and I really do only have two and a half million. Yep. So if you, you got to stay hungry as self-employed because it does lack that comfort factor that w2 provides mm -hmm. w2 it's you know 95 percent of jobs you don't have to give it 100 percent your all <laughs> yep there's not a whole lot to lose unless you got a micromanagement situation going on and they're watching every move but as a self-employed person you have everything to lose mm -hmm. no matter how much you have going on you got to push for more because you can lose half of it tomorrow yep that no, makes sense so all right. Well, good words of advice. And uh, again, for anyone out there, uh, feel free to um, check out the Wealth and Freedom Nexus podcast. Uh, Timothy's uh, been interviewed on there twice. And if you yourself are looking for a mortgage or cash out loan, uh, go to timothyhero.com. Timothy, thanks again for thanks again for coming on. Thanks, John. I appreciate it.